A Oneness of Life, a Prayer of St. G. How many worlds present themselves to us. There is first an innocence lost to us, for we are not aware of the contrasts in the world. For all intents, we could be a baby bunny rabbit, scampering through each day unscathed. These two die, and then there is nothing. We are not so great as whales, nor fast as cheetahs, nor swim deep, nor fly. Ours is a world of limited dimensions. But we are given to know that there is more, much more. It is odd because each man senses the oneness of his life and some mysterious calling to another world. Generally, men would not trade their life for another. Generally, we also have a reluctance toward this other world. We fear death and cling to life. We choose an anonymity with you. We saw you not in the grass, in the sea, in the air. You did not speak to us or touch us. These are the things we like. They are familiar. We would choose to extend them for centuries if we could keep our youth. You, Lord, are too mysterious. Your silence and invisibility make you easy to ignore. This was not the way of it. We were friends in the garden, and then an evil presence came between. There is a friendship in the divine, but not amongst the divine and the mortal even though we are made to be immortal. A man cannot be God. A man cannot be the friend of God. You are too overpoweringly your own being and cannot come down to us. No universe could be created to effect the joining of the human and divine essences. But outside of a decree, a plan, a history, the reason that man is made the way he is propounds to one thing. You have made us in your image. We are like you and you are like us. There is no alien being which could have occupied the universe. There is God and then there are beings in the likeness of God. Thus we know something of what the higher world will attend. We may not see the face of the Father or of the Holy Spirit, yet the three are one. So that the Son, seeing, talking, touching with us, is one God in relationship with us. Nothing else fits. Nothing could have been created to command this destiny. When we say there will be new heavens and a new earth, we consider that there will be a physical life of senses, perhaps further senses than we now possess. It will not simply be your spirit loving ours, our spirit loving yours. Our earthly life was to be an intimation of this heavenly eternal life. And why do not men leave their lives, leave all, to pursue this wonderful life? It is because they do not believe it is true, though it is written for us, though Jesus showed himself to be God. We have too much on our minds and in our hearts too much humanity to want you to be true. We are content and put suppositions of your requirements of us as barriers to the desiring of your person and presence. Our conscience knows that there is no way to purge our sin and guilt. We have dragged them along for so long that they have become a part of us. We see how limited we are, but we do not care to know all the people of the earth, to love them, or even to like them. So we will not swim or fly or hop through innocence. We are used to it. This is who we now are. One night we shall all fall asleep and in vision portray to ourselves a perfect life. There will be friendships and love, loyalty, dance, song, feasting and adventure. Our mind and heart will be clean and fresh enthusiastic toward all the infinite moments to come. O oh man, awaken to the great being who broods over our lives, desiring us though we do not desire you. What is man? We are adopted children of the very Son of God and his Father and his Spirit. All will be known intimately and everlastingly. We will be like them. Let us sleep now to see what truly is and to possess our peace. Amen.